head out of my legs. And so at mile 6, 12, 18, 22, still finish the marathon in 5 hours and 4 minutes. 45 minutes is dumping blood out of my legs. So then three, two or three months later, I went to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, uh, and was going to try to do the Ironman to kind of get this, uh, you know, get prepared for Hawaii. And I actually made it through the swim portion of the race, got on the 60 miles on the bike, and I actually had a bike rack where my chain locked up and flipped me other handlebars. And I fractured one of the vertebrae on my back. And so uh, that was three months before Hawaii. So I didn't get it. I made it through 11 miles on the run uh, portion of the race, and then I didn't. Uh, I had to. Call, I had to call it a day. So I didn't train any in July of 2007. Two weeks into August, I didn't train, and and so I only had five weeks really to train for Hawaii. And so obviously that's not enough time, but I was able to sur survive it. And I get kicked in the eye when I was in in, in Hawaii in Kona, four, 400 meters into the swim. So. I was swimming with one eye and no legs. I'm not really sure what that is, but that was me. And uh, so I made it through the swim portion of the race. Got about uh, to mile 78 on the bike portion. Had a 20 mile an hour headwind, and and that was uh, tough. But I made it 40 minutes uh, prior to the cutoff on the bike, and then got on the run. And I basically at, for 17 miles, I had to run a uh, a very basically I had to run an interval kind of portion of a marathon because I would run as hard as I could for four miles, but it was so darn hot out there I had to dump sweat, not blood, we got that problem fixed, but sweat out of my legs every four miles. So I'd run as fast as I could, as hard as I could, then I'd sit down and take about six minutes, six or seven minutes to wipe my legs off, dump my legs off, get them back on, and then run. And then at mile 17, the rate, run race course director said, uh, you've really got to pick up the pace or you're not going to finish. Based, and my friends didn't think I was going to finish based on my toms. And so I didn't take off the, my legs, and I ran 25% uh, faster the last 10 miles than I did the previous 17 um, or, or 16. And, uh, you know, so I finished in 16 hours and 42 minutes. And so it's given me an awesome opportunity to be able to go around and invest in kids. I do corporate speaking. Uh, I, I talk to kids groups. I've probably talked to seven or 8,000 kids uh, this year all across the country. And it allows me to be able to go into my... Um, into the uh, uh, military bases. I've got invitations uh, from all over the military bases and I go there and I sit down with 19-year-old uh, kids who used to be cross-country runners and they, they haven't heard my story. And so when I sit down with them and I look, look, look at them, like one kid two weeks ago when I looked at him and he said, hey, he's from Arkansas, he's a good southern boy like me. And so I asked him what he did in high school. He said he was a cross-country runner. And if he's in a wheelchair, he doesn't know what's going to happen because his legs are already off. He has never even had a walking leg. But I didn't talk to him about walking. I talked to him about running. And I told him that if he, if he wanted to run, that he could. And I said, the reason I can say that is because I'm a guy with no legs, and I finish one of the toughest endurance races on the planet. And if I can do that, then you can do that. Because he's got one good sound leg. So long story short, thank you.